Hi, today we're going to be talking about the Beer's Law in Spectrophotometry Experiment for Chem 1465. This experiment exposes you to things such as absorbance, spectrophotometry, and the equation M1V1 equals M2V2. Let's get started. Once you've gathered your 1 to 1 water ethanol solution and the dye solution, head over to the spectrophotometer. Fill a cuvette with your 1 to 1 solution, the blank, and place it in the machine. Take special care when handling the cuvette. We'll talk about this later. To auto zero the machine, you're going to want to go to the measurement tab and hit auto zero. This may take a moment, but it's very important to do. Once this is done, put your cuvette with the stock dye solution into the machine. Now we need to find the wavelength which absorbs the most light. To do this, just hit start. A graph like this one should appear. Once this is done, Use the arrow keys to navigate along the curve and move to the top of it. If you look at the bottom right of the screen, you'll get a wavelength as the first number and the absorbance as the second. Look for the wavelength which gives the highest absorbance. This is your max wavelength that you'll need for the rest of the experiment. Now that you have your wavelength, it's time to make solutions. Try and be as precise as possible with the graduated cylinders. The more accurate you are, the better your data will look for the post lab when you graph it. Take special care to try and get the exact measurements in your lab manual. Look at the meniscus on the pipette. It should be fairly obvious. Also, use two different pipettes for the one-to-one -one solution and the dye solutions. You want to use different pipettes so that your solution doesn't become contaminated. Again, take special care when filling the graduated pipette. Be as accurate as possible. Another tip is not to let the very tip of the pipette touch the diluted solution that you're making. Otherwise, it may contaminate the pipette. When you've prepped all of your solutions, move them over to the spectrophotometer. Now we can talk about cuvette handling. When holding the cuvette, hold it only on the cloudy side. Light will pass through the clear side, and you don't want anything obstructing it. Notice how I put the solution into the cuvette twice to rinse it. This ensures the only solution in the cuvette is the current one. If you don't do this, your data might be thrown off. Now you can fill it a third time. Finally, place it into the machine, but not before cleaning it with a Kim wipe. This gets rid of any fingerprints or residual dust on the cuvette. Now for the next step. You have to put it into fixed wavelength mode. Once there, you'll have to input the maximum wavelength that you recorded earlier. Be sure to add and then delete the default wavelength, otherwise you'll get an error. The machine will calibrate itself, which should take a few moments. But once you're looking at the right wavelength, you can hit start and it'll display the absorbance for that specific solution. Now, do the exact same process with all four of your solutions. Now, I'm preparing solution B. Again, be careful with the cuvette. You want to rinse it twice before doing anything else. Finally, fill it a third time. Now it can go into the machine. Always be sure to rinse the cuvette for maximum accuracy. Once in the machine, close the hood and hit start again. Now it should display a different absorbance. This absorbance is specific to that solution. Finally, we're at the Fruit Loop stage. You'll want to tear the scale to the mass of an empty beaker first. Then, without removing it, add your Fruit Loops. This will give you an accurate mass of 10 Fruit Loops. Be sure the Fruit Loops are the same color as the dye you've been using. Record this mass for calculations later.
Next, crush the Fruit Loops. You want them to be in as fine a powder as possible. This will allow for the most dye to be removed when filtering. It also helps to not clog the filter paper as you're filtering, which makes it go a little bit faster. Here, I'll explain some helpful tips for using a volumetric flask. This is one of the most precise instruments for measuring volume, and you want to respect that. Once close to filling to the 100 milliliter line, use a disposable dropper to place as precise an amount as possible into the flask. The closer you are to the 100 milliliter fill line, the more accurate your calculations. Once this is done, take the solution and bring it to the spectrophotometer. Now you can do the same things as earlier. Fill the cuvette with the solution twice, dump it twice, fill it one last time, clean it with a Kim wipe, and place it into the spectrophotometer. So, to recap what we've talked about today, you'll want to record your initial concentration of the dye for your M1V1 equals M2V2 calculations. You'll want to remember to auto-zero the machine. This is one of the most important steps. Remember to find the maximum wavelength using the stock solution, as this will be necessary for all other sections of the lab. You also want to be as precise as possible when measuring volumes so your calculations are accurate. Remember to use fixed wavelength mode to find the absorptions and the max wavelength you found earlier. This is the most important thing to remember. Finally, ask your TA if you have any questions. They want to make sure you do well in lab and are there for more than just watching. Thank you for your time and I hope your experiment goes well.